And if you just tuned in, what we're doing today is we're looking into two-way communication between fibers. Uh, and our stat store is going to be exactly that. So stat store is going to be a class. And it's going to define an initialized method uh, that doesn't take in much. And the idea here is the following. What we'll do is we'll define a, we'll call it, we wanted to call it request, given that we're talking about servers. We're going to refine a request channel. We'll define the type here in a second. And then what we want to do is whenever we start running a stats store, what we'll do is we'll, we also want to initialize a stats object, which is a stats dot new, which is the underlying object. Let me make sure I require that from dot dot star stats, uh, sorry, dot dot slash stats. And now what we want is, what we'll do is we'll just request dot receive. And I know things will look a bit weird for a second, but we're just going to case on that. We're going to case on request dot receive. This is our value. Can I just call it received or request? Okay, so this is our request. And what we'll do is we'll when on the request. And whenever the request is to log success, or actually, yeah, log success, what we'll do is we will call stats dot log success. And then we need the URL, right? So we're just gonna do I'm just gonna do rec dot URL. We haven't defined what log success looks like uh, yet, but you can Again, we're starting from the API and then we're figuring out the details as we go. And then log failure. Uh, so this is going to be the same, but for failure. So far, so good. So if I actually go and check the implementation of stats, you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just calling log success and log failure on a stats object, nothing crazy. And finally, and this is the part where things get interesting, there's another possibility that the message we receive on the request channel is actually a GET request. And if it is a GET request, we're just going to do it so that our value, our request in includes a channel. I'm going to call it a return channel. This is going to be pretty. So. Whenever people send us a GET request, that GET request is going to include a reference to a channel. And what we'll do is we'll take the return channel and we'll just send stats.values to it. Now, isn't that isn't this brilliant? So this return channel, you can think of it as a temporary channel that is only used to return uh, data through. So the communication will happen between fibers will happen across two different uh, two different channels. The request will come in through the request channel and then will go out through a temporary channel uh, that is that has been defined somehow by the caller. But to make the life of the caller a bit simpler, and of course here we want to spawn, uh, wrap everything into a fiber. So this is gonna be our stats store to Okay, so I can I can hear you asking. Okay, but how do people get a, get a hang of the of the request uh, channel uh, and what is the type of the request channel in itself? Well, the type of the request channel is a bit clearer now. Request can be of type log success, or they can be of type log failure, or they can be of type get. Where are these types defined? Well, they are defined exactly in stats store because these are the messages that stats store understands. So I'm going to define a record object. This is just a shortcut to define structs log success. And log success will just want a um, URL or type string. And I'm going to find another record. It's going to be called log failure and this one is going to be also 
passing a string and then I'm going to find a new record called get. This one is going to use a channel, a return channel, which is a channel of array of stats info. As easy as this. So whenever we call return, dot, return channel dot send, we then pass an object of type array of stats info. And this is it, right? Now the question is, how does the caller actually figure out all about these messages and how they need to be used? They will not, because we're, what we're going to be doing is we're going to define some convenience methods for the client to call. So one of them is going to be called log success. The other one is going to be called log failure, of course. And for these two, nothing crazy, really. We're just going to be doing, right? So log success is just going to call stats dot, sorry, it's just going to call request dot send um, log success dot new on the URL. Okay, things are coming together. I'm gonna copy paste this and make it a failure. There you go. And in this case, you can see how we don't care about the uh, return type, right? So we just send the log failure um, request uh, through the request channel, and we don't need to wait for a response. We just send, and then our fiber, stat store fiber is gonna consume messages as we go. And also to make sure we actually do that, let me just remember to include this into a loop so that we actually keep on doing that forever. There we go. And now for the, the the only new part really of this of this session, which is defining a two-way communication between between fibers. One is the calling fiber, the other one is the fiber running inside this uh, initialized block. So the get method is gonna be, and as you can see, the caller doesn't know anything about channels, it doesn't know anything about the fact that there's a fiber running inside the server. It doesn't know anything. It just wants to make sure what we what we want is that our client doesn't have to worry about concurrency and it doesn't have to worry about um, uh, thread safety at all, right? So we're gonna take care of that for them. And what we'll do here is we'll just create a new channel, which is gonna be our return channel, channel.new. And I'll tell you what, as a further optimization, because we know that this is a channel of array of stats info, can you tell me how many events, how many messages we expect to receive on this particular channel so that I can define the capacity here? It's going to be just one message. It's going to be the response to the get request we send, right? And so I'm going to set the capacity of return channel to one for that reason. And then the next thing we do is very in a similar fashion of what, of what, of what we've seen up, uh, up here, we're just gonna say request.send return channel, sorry, get.new return channel. There we go. Now, is that it? Well, not really, because if we do this, we're halfway there. So what's this is gonna, what this is gonna do is it's gonna, uh, the message is gonna be received by uh, stat store fiber the stats of fiber, and then it's gonna match the get, uh, and then we're gonna extract the return channel and then send through that. Now, this request won't be blocking because return channel actually has capacity one, so this request will return immediately for the fiber, but if we actually want to return the object itself, right? So get is actually a method that returns an array of stats info. So what we need to do is we need to return channel dot receive. And this is going to return a, an object of type array stats info. Now, you can see that from the outside, from the point of view of the client of this class, of this server, whoever is calling stats store dot get doesn't have to know about return channels being initialized. It doesn't have to know about a request uh, event stream or message stream that we 
we use to send requests and uh, take care of requests internally. And they don't have to know about the synchronous uh, exchange of messages that happens. Well, synchronous and asynchronous uh, exchange of messages that happens in these, in these, uh, uh, inside this fiber. So that's the beauty of it. And so if we now save this and go back to our, let me just save the stats writer. Hey, I can see a new viewer. Thanks for joining us. We're just uh, having some fun with some two-way communication between, between fibers in Crystal. So we just defined a server called, uh, called stats store. It's a server that um, encapsulates state and in particular, it saves data about success and failure rates uh, for different URLs. And the way it does it is it initializes a stats object at the very beginning of its life. And then inside our initialize block, the server actually defined a spawn spawns a fiber called stats store. And that fiber will just loop through messages coming through the request channel, which is a private channel that only the server knows about. And depending on the type of the uh, message it receives, it will either update the internal state of, uh, of the server itself, or it will read from the internal state and then send the internal state through to a temporary channel. If we go and look where that temporary channel comes from, that comes from the get method defined on the server itself. So whenever a client calls the get, method on the on an instance of stats store what happens is a temporary channel is initialized the temporary channel is uh, encapsulated in a get message and sent over to the request channel and then inside the request channel we've seen how get matches a particular uh, a particular uh, when uh, clause where we extract the status of the uh, stats object and send it back through the temporary channel and that's what return channel.receive actually does. And this is the object we're gonna to return to the client. 